1923, emerging from the ashes of war, a collapsed empire, and foreign occupation, came a nation-state. A republic born amid sweeping changes and revolutionary leadership. Turkish historian Safet Emre Tonguç gives us a window into the monumental story of Turkey 100 years on. Safet Emre Tonguç, really good to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, with pleasure, Imran. Thank you very much for the invitation. Tell me, what does 100 years of Turkey mean to you personally? Well, personally, it's very important for me because Atatürk, who is the father of Turkey, the founding father of our country, uh, has founded this uh, wonderful uh, country 100 years ago. And he did all the changes because, uh, you know, uh, before Turkey, it was the Ottoman Empire, but uh, it was unfortunately not the best time of Ottoman Empire. It was called the Sick Man of Bosphorus, and we are looking at the Bosphorus currently. And uh, that's why he created a new nation out of nothing. Because uh, at that time, uh, all those uh, nations like uh, Italy, uh, France, England and Greece, they were trying to uh, take uh, parts uh, from that uh, huge empire. Uh, so at least he managed to keep a, a big portion of the uh, empire yeah. at that time and he created a wonderful new western oriented nation that's why it's very uh, important for us because he created a secular uh, country a very modern democratic country so he gave us uh, the chance uh, that uh, we could be a part of the western world mm. and we'll separate this out and explore different aspects of it over the duration of this interview something that's interesting is that for a lot of outsiders, especially people in the West, who don't really live with the legacy of maybe what happened like directly after World War I especially, when they talk about, say, Sykes-Picot or the Treaty of Sevres or yes. Lausanne, these major treaties, it's more academic. It's curiosity. It's right. history. But the Turkish people and, and other people in, in this region, for them, it's much bigger because these were major shockwaves at the time. Right. Countries were divided up. This particular country, at the end of World War I, this, this Bosphorus, these straits patrolled by the ships of the French and the British and, the British. and others, the country being carved up. Help me understand what it was like for the Turkish people at the dying ends of the Ottoman Empire at that time, just before the Republic was founded. Right. Well, first of all, we are the great, great uh, grandchildren of such a big empire. During the time of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, uh, Ottoman Empire was 15 million square kilometers. Yeah. And today, uh, United States is 9.6 uh, million square kilometers, just to make a comparison right. to give you an idea. And in the list of United Nations, there are 193 nations and uh, Ottoman Empire ruled in 50 of them. So that gives us the whole picture how important the empire was. And also it was one of the longest lasting empires of the world. It lasted from uh, 1299 all the way to uh, the First World War. So it was like 700 years. So we were the children of such a great uh, empire. And at the end, uh, we were occupied and uh, they were trying to divide our uh, country. So uh, that's why it was very uh, sad for the people living in Istanbul yeah. that it was uh, occupied by all those forces and people had no idea what would happen uh, mm -hmm. next. Uh, most probably uh, they would be mandated or they would be uh, ruled by uh, some other uh, people. But uh, we were so lucky that the genies of the uh, century uh, rose up among all those uh, very unfortunate uh, things and uh, he created our uh, nation. But uh, the period that you're talking about when there was uh, occupation, uh, it was such a sad time uh, for the history of the uh, city because, you know, this was the most beautiful city of the world. That's why even Napoleon Bonaparte said that if the earth were a single state, 
uh, Istanbul should be its capital city. Mm -hmm. So it was that uh, marvelous, that uh, great. But all of a sudden, there were all those uh, enemy ships uh, occupying your uh, country and all those soldiers walking in the streets of Istanbul. So it was a very hard time. Uh, and uh, of course, we paid big prices. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, lost their lives. And as a result, uh, we came uh, with the uh, Republic. That's why the Republic means so much to us, mm. uh, because uh, we really earned it. Right. We really deserved it. Major population exchanges, even as peace settled, changing identity. There was this fear, and people still talk about it, that this nation could have descended into complete chaos. And they give comparisons, maybe unfairly to other Middle Eastern countries, that Turkey could have become like that, whether exactly. it's Iraq, Syria, etc. Um, when we look at how Ataturk and those with him did this, what was the magic formula? The magic formula was the love of uh, the country. Uh, that was the first uh, reason. And the uh, second uh, reason uh, was Atatürk was not a very uh, successful uh, political figure, but he was an incredible uh, military figure as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he had uh, such a great education and he was in uh, different wars. So uh, he was uh, not just very well educated, but he was very experienced as well. Yeah. So he knew how to handle the war. So I think that was our uh, biggest luck. And fortunately, he had a lot of uh, right uh, people who fought uh, with him. And also the people, although they were very poor, they had nothing, even they didn't have weapons, they had no rifles at all, mm. but they had the faith for their nation. They had uh, this uh, power in their hearts uh, to protect their country and to save their country. I think that was the uh, main uh, initiative behind that. Tremendous social domestic changes happened right. in the years after the procl proclamation of the Republic. Um, the role of women education, changing the, the script um, to, the, to the Latin script, people choosing surnames. Right. <laughs> this is revolutionary stuff. I mean, is it, is it hard almost for um, a modern mind to, to try and comprehend so many changes so quickly at that point in time after so much trauma of war mm -hmm. happening relatively smoothly and happening relatively successfully? Exactly. Well, uh, Atatürk, uh, for us, is the uh, genius and also the leader of his century. Mm. So uh, that's why, as people trusted him so much after the War of Independence, uh, they uh, exactly did whatever uh, he uh, wanted uh, for them. And they knew that all those things uh, would lead to good things for the country because uh, we had no education, we were so poor, and uh, the women uh, were in uh, such a, a miserable uh, condition. They knew that all those uh, things would elevate their life standards. Mm. And also, you know, it wasn't easy uh, to do all those uh, revolutions. For instance, uh, the revolution uh, for the alphabet, because uh, he said that in six months, all the newspapers would be in Latin alphabet. And can you imagine today, think that in the United States, uh, Biden uh, tells people that from tomorrow on you will use the uh, Latin, uh, instead of Latin alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. And in six months, everything will be in Everybody Arabic. Everybody becomes illiterate overnight. Exactly, uh, illiterate. Uh, and also, uh, you know, there would be a big chaos and uh, big problems uh, on the streets. But uh, people had the belief in Ataturk because he uh, managed such an incredible thing for uh, Turkey. He uh, created this uh, incredible nation almost out of nothing. That's why they had the uh, faith to Ataturk. And all those revolutions led to incredible uh, things for our country. Uh, so he provided us with a very good secular Western education. And he uh, made all the uh, changes uh, which would lead Turkey, uh, Turkey uh, towards a uh, Western uh, country. So, uh, you know, uh, there was no uh, industry in the country, no factories at all, but he has established all those uh, things. So uh, that's why this trust in uh, Ataturk uh, made it much easier. Otherwise, in a different country, it would be very difficult. Tell me how the country over the 100 years, because this is not just about 1923 and 2023, yes. it's about the journey. Yes. Tell me how it juggled turning to the West, embracing new things from the West, still retaining a heritage or a legacy of the Ottoman Empire, East, West, tradition, modernity. Tell me how it has 
juggled and managed this in your eyes over the 100 years? Uh, of course, it wasn't that easy over uh, 100 uh, years. Uh, first of all, I wish uh, Atatürk had lived longer mm. uh, because his right uh, man, uh, Ismet Inönü, died in 1973. But Atatürk died at the age of 57 in 1938. Mm. So if he would uh, have uh, left this country till 1970s, I think it would be totally a different uh, Turkey that we would be uh, living uh, today. Uh, so uh, the uh, first uh, years after the Republic, when he ruled for 15 years, it was an amazing country that everything uh, was uh, towards a better life for the people, that there was a big development, a lot of changes, all the revolutions were uh, taking place. And fortunately, uh, later on, Ismet Inönü uh, was a good leader too, that we didn't participate in the Second World War because we paid our price in the first one. So we lost a very home, big peace yes. in the world. Exactly, right? Right. exactly. That's what uh, Atatürk always defended. Yeah. And that's why Atatürk uh, was also a leader uh, seen uh, or uh, respected by all the uh, enemies uh, who have fought with him during the uh, war of independence. So because they realized that uh, he was the uh, man of the peace, but uh, before the peace, he had to defend his country. He had to create this uh, new country. Then he worked for the world uh, peace as well. So as we didn't uh, participate uh, in the Second World War, I think that was a very wise uh, decision uh, for uh, Turkey. But of course, over the uh, decades, we have faced a lot of uh, troubles. Like uh, we had all those uh, like 1960 coup and then uh, 1980 coup. Yeah. Uh, those uh, times uh, were difficult times for Turkey that uh, kind of uh, backed the Turkey, mm. uh, Turkey uh, a little bit uh, and it caused uh, kind of an obstacle uh, for further uh, development. But today, when you uh, look at uh, our country, it is one of the uh, biggest uh, economies uh, of the world. Right. And uh, today, it's one of the most important geopolitical uh, nations uh, of the world and uh, also it's, I think, uh, the richest uh, nation regarding the cultural and historical uh, heritage. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, I'm a historian, but I'm also a professional tour guide. I'm a, a travel writer. I travel all over keeps the world. It keeps me very busy. It keeps me very busy. Actually, I just came uh, from uh, Saloniki because we visited uh, the house of uh, Atatürk where he was born in 1881. And before that, I was in uh, Ankara uh, that I visited the uh, tomb of uh, or the mausoleum of Atatürk with uh, some friends. So uh, in that respect, uh, we are uh, very lucky uh, to have uh, such a leader. So as I travel all over the world, I have been to like 142 countries. I realize how rich uh, the cultural uh, and historical heritage of uh, Turkey uh, is and that's why there is a great potential. We are one of the most important nations for uh, the travel industry. Uh, you know, uh, we are like uh, one of the top 10 uh, most uh, visited uh, countries uh, all the world. When you think of 193 nations, I think that's a, a very important point. And you wear these different hats, writer, historian, scholar, tour guide. Tell me about the impressions of the people who see these things through your eyes as you're taking them to Ankara or Istanbul and, and elsewhere. Like what? to Cappadocia, yeah, to Antalya, that, yeah. because, uh, you know, uh, in UNESCO uh, cultural heritage list, we've got 21 places, but I think we should have at least 50 because there are a lot of uh, suspending uh, places, which uh, hopefully will be in the list as well. So like Istanbul is one of them. We got Troya. You know, Troya shaped uh, the history and we all studied uh, the history of uh, Troya uh, when we were, uh, or Troy, uh, when we were uh, little kids. So. Uh, this country is very important, but people usually don't realize how important uh, yeah. it is. And uh, usually, like when I guide Americans, they come to uh, Turkey as kind of a last destination. They look at the map, they have seen all uh, the places, they say, oh, there's a place called Turkey, let's go to Turkey and see what it is. But then when they come here, they are amazed and uh, they see an incredible wealth uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, given uh, to them. Because, you know, uh, Turkey, which is called Asia Minor or Anatolia in the past, was a bridge between East and West. So all the nations had to uh, pass uh, from here. And uh, that's why we've got uh, like more than uh, 30 uh, uh, civilizations uh, which were living uh, within our uh, nations in the uh, past, from Phrygians to uh, Hittites, uh, from uh, the Lycians to uh, Romans, 
uh, from uh, the Byzantines uh, to Selchuk's, all people left their incredible monuments in this uh, right. country. That's why uh, the richness is amazing in uh, Turkey mm. and that surprises them and they want to come back again. Mm. And we've got also a lot of national uh, uh, and uh, natural uh, beauties like Pamukkale is uh, one of them where there's also the city of Hierapolis uh, next to it and when you look at the history I mean uh, this was a place where all those important people uh, passed by like uh, most of the people don't know that uh, Caesar Augustus said Veni Vidi Vici in Turkey which was in uh, the Black Sea coast uh, because at that time there was uh, the Pontus Kingdom and there was uh, one of the uh, kings who created some uh, troubles for him. Right. Then he came and he said Veni Vidi Vici in a city called Tokat and even the uh, place where he said this is called Zilea uh, and today we call it Zile and yeah. uh, that was you know uh, 47 before common era. So this shows how important this land is and you know this is the place where uh, St. Paul uh, preached. That's why the seven churches of Asia Minor are located here and uh, he was a native of this land uh, who made Christianity a religion right. rather than a sect of uh, Judaism. So uh, if you uh, look to Antioch which was one of the most important cities of uh, Roman Empire. Uh, Antioch was the place where the Christians uh, named themselves Christians for the first time in uh, the history. Or look at Ephesus. It's the largest excavated uh, Greco-Roman city of the world. So we're very proud of our cultural uh, heritage and we embrace all of them and we love to show all those things to uh, people. And also look at the city. I mean this is the only city in the world which was the capital city of three great empires yeah. uh, which were first of all Roman Empire, then Eastern Roman Empire or the so-called Byzantine Empire and finally Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. So it carries all the wealth of these three uh, nations and so it wasn't a surprise right. when uh, Napoleon considered this city as the capital of the world and you know this is the only city in the world uh, which connects to continents. Uh, we are uh, uh, just uh, doing this show with you uh, on the European side of the city right across is uh, Asia and uh, this is uh, also the only city where the sea runs through it so it's not a river uh, it's uh, physically uh, Bosphorus that is connecting uh, the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmara so if there would be no Bosphorus the Black Sea would be one of the biggest lakes of the world so there would be no connection to the Aegean or to Mediterranean to the warm waters and we have also incredible places on the Aegean coast uh, on the Mediterranean coast we have sun sea sand but we have also all kind of uh, natural beauties and all kind of uh, cultural and historical heritage. Well you came you saw and you conquered this interview in selling your your country here <laughs> especially for people who want to visit and you've mentioned a lot of things the different empires the different ways of thinking different religions I mean yeah. you know Selchuk, uh, Byzantine, Ottoman I mean we can go on Eurartians yes. yeah I could go and go on and rename all of these things and, 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 and list them again but you said an important geopolitical position geographical right. position all of this heritage all this wealth of, of, of things to absorb over thousands of years and differing ways of looking at the world religiously politically and otherwise different types of people you put them all together and you put them in a in a region which has to interface with the rest of the world because of geography it means that there are going to be contradictions and they're going to be challenges so just as I asked you how did the nation manage the legacy of the Ottoman past versus trying to be modern. How do you keep all of these things in this history together in a s sort of stable pot yeah. and still keep keep everybody happy if you can? Yes. Well, uh, you know, uh, the victory is not easy and it has all the prices. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, a melting pot of all those uh, things if you uh, look at it uh, in total but it's not always that easy I mean there are always uh, you know uh, troubles there are always uh, some uh, people who uh, object to the uh, things so uh, but as a, a result I think uh, we all uh, helped it and uh, we all uh, created this uh, wonderful uh, nation but uh, I just want to uh, say uh, one thing that uh, in every country yeah. uh, there are people 
uh, who support you or who oppose you. And that, that's, and, and I guess, let me ask you, I mean, from the outside, if I took a very simplistic view in a political sense, people say, well, you know, the country has a lot of political divisions between those who are secularly leaning and those who are religiously leaning. If you look a bit closer, among those who are secular leaning, there are those who are more liberal, cosmopolitan, those who are more nationalist. Uh, if you look among those who are religiously leaning, you have those who are more liberal, cosmopolitan, those who are more traditional and what, have a different, you know, religious interpretation, and so on. You'd, you'd have these subdivisions, and exactly. those who are more democratic, those who are more autocratic, and, and so on and so forth. What is the one, what is the glue, the yes. common thread out of all those divisions? There was an election recently. Yes. Out of all those divisions, what is the glue that keeps all these people together and has kept all these people together over the past 100 years? Well, I think uh, the glue is uh, in the words of Ataturk, because he said, ne mutlu Türküm diyene. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, what a great happiness for those who calls them a uh, Turk, a Turk, or a, a Turkish uh, person. Uh, because it doesn't mean that you should have the same religion or the same ethnic uh, background. The most important thing is uh, to feel that you belong to this country. I think uh, that's what uh, connects us uh, at the bottom line. Mm. And looking forward, we're not going to be around 100 years from now. Exactly. That's something miraculous scientifically, but I wouldn't want to be around 100 years from now. Tell me, tell me what your hopes are for, for your nation looking forward to the next 100 years. Well, uh, I think uh, we will be following the uh, footsteps of Ataturk because he has shown us uh, the right uh, way uh, on the way uh, to a better uh, life, uh, on the way to democracy, on the way to Western uh, way of uh, thinking. So if we uh, do uh, what he has uh, told us, uh, I think that will uh, make us a very uh, bright and uh, promising uh, country. Hmm. And what is the most difficult part of your job as a historian in trying to explain this country and its history to people? Uh, well, I think the most difficult thing is uh, to fight against the prejudices because people have always prejudices. Such but as? It, uh, well, uh, for instance, uh, for the past, for the things that had happened in uh, Anatolia, uh, people might claim uh, different things. But I always say one thing as a historian, it was the time of war. Mm. And everybody had to uh, defend something. Some people defended their ideas. Some people uh, defended their uh, country, their uh, nation. Some people wanted uh, their uh, religion uh, to be upfront of everything. So when there were all kind of uh, those uh, clashes, everybody had to defend uh, his part. And the Turkish people uh, wanted to defend their uh, country. So I think that's the uh, most difficult part to uh, tell people. And sometimes I believe that uh, Turkey is like the black ship of uh, Europe. I mean, look at the history of all those nations. I look at uh, France, look at England, what they ha or uh, Spain, uh, Spain or Portugal. Uh, they were all uh, countries uh, which colonized almost the whole world. Mm. And you know, as if they haven't done anything and as if Turkey has done all those uh, things. So I think uh, everybody has to be uh, objective and uh, has to read the uh, correct history because uh, history is uh, sometimes uh, criticized in uh, different ways. I mean, everyone has his or her own version of uh, history and uh, takes, uh, makes it uh, kind of a big gap uh, between the uh, reality and between the things that they say. My final question to you as a historian, what's your favorite period of history in the 100 years of this republic? Well, for me, 1930s because it was a period of Ataturk uh, that, uh, you know, it was uh, one of the most successful nations uh, in the world. And also, you know, it was the time that this country was not very crowded and we did not destroy that much of our uh, country. Because today, when we look from here, uh, we can see all this construction all over the mm. Bosphorus and not just in Bosphorus, but it's all over uh, Turkey. And of course, it is also related to the uh, increase of the uh, population because, you know, when the Republic was proclaimed, it was like 13 million people mm. living in Turkey. But with all those demographic changes, with all the things happening in the neighboring uh, countries, mm. uh, the population is almost like 100 million mm. people uh, with uh, people from uh, different uh, nations. So. That's why we need uh, more homes, we need uh, more places for them uh, to uh, work, uh, to live. So 
the construction is uh, one of the biggest problems uh, today uh, for me. So that's why uh, this age is not my uh, favorite uh, time in uh, Turkey. But also I like 1980s when I was studying in the university. I consider it more of a, uh, you know, age of innocence where the world was even uh, better than today because uh, today the world that we live in is full of chaos, full of uh, problems and you know with our geopolitical uh, location uh, each day you end up with uh, different uh, problems. I find the 1990s to be my favorite time in life but that's because I was a teenager. Also. I know. So maybe it's something to do with our age. Exactly, exactly. Safet Emre Tonguc, thank you so much for joining With us. pleasure, with pleasure.